let's make our custom entity tameable. All right, we find ourselves back in Intelligent once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be making our custom entity that we've created last time tameable. Now, this is actually not too crazy of a thing to do. So we will be making some adjustments in our raccoon entity class, but that is pretty much going to be it. So the first thing, of course, we're not going to extend from the animal class, but the tameable animal class. Now, what we want to change here is we want to basically change it right here as well, as well as in the set attributes. Then no more errors should be present right here. Now, we're going to need a few more things for the, well, the tameability stuff as well. So for this, first and foremost, we're going to need a entity data accessor. So I'm going to copy this over and I'm going to explain. So this data accessor right here basically saves a Boolean entity. You can see it's called sitting. So we're basically going to make this raccoon entity sit when we right click it. But the thing about it is that why we do we need this? Why can't we just, you know, use the already existing functionality? Because in the tameable entity, I believe it's right here. Uh, there is an order to sit Boolean. And we can see that it is basically set in the, in this one right here, I believe. No, it's actually set in sitting pose. There you go. So why can't we just use this? Why why do we need a custom Boolean, in, especially in data accessor, to save this? Well, the reason for this is because the Boolean right here is only accessible on the server. However, GeckoLib is a client-sided thing that we are doing. So this predicate here is actually only ever called on the client side, meaning we actually want to add the, um, you know, you want to add a method that, well, basically displays the sitting animation. And this is the reason why we basically need the data accessor here, because this one is then basically synchronized via the server and the client. So let's just then copy over a few other methods that we're also going to need. For a data entity data accessor, what we need is we need the this class right here, the define synced data method. So this, you just have to call this entity data dot define, and then the setting variable in this case, and then just the, well, the value of this particular thing, the default value base. That is the whole ordeal right here, and that should be fine. The next thing we're going to need is we're going to need the, well, a sitting method as well as three other methods, or actually two other methods, first and foremost. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this over. So we have the set sitting method, the is sitting method, and then also the get team and the can be leash method. The can be leash method returns false simply because of the fact that at the moment, Ecolib has a a certain bug in it. I mean, it might be fixed at the you know at the time the video comes out, or maybe not. Th that when you leash a gecko lib entity, then the leash disappears. So it's kind of um, you know annoying in that way. Then falsing this one is just a little bit easier in that moment. But apart from that, of course, the set sitting and the is sitting method should be fairly self-explanatory, all things considered. We're also calling the set order to sit method here, so that you know both the server and the client and everyone basically is uh, the sitting is set correctly here. That's very important. We also want to call the set tame method. So this one is just going to well, basically give our uh, tamed entity a little bit more base stats. So you can see we're increasing the health here, the max health, the attack damage, and the movement speed. This is not necessarily done. And also I highly recommend playing around with those numbers. These are quite high, all things considered. But once again, you can just play around with them uh, on your own time and be open to experimentation on the numbers one way or the other because, you know, making everything balanced is a thing that it's going to take a lot of time one way or the other. Right, but we are not done just yet. We still want to actually overwrite two other methods, and that's the read additional save data and save uh, and, and add additional save data. So these two methods are incredibly important to add because the general idea here is that these methods, right, similar to how what we've seen in the block entity, these are called when the actual world is saved and we basically want to save the, well, sitting variable properly. Now, once again, this ordered sit variable is saved properly, but not our custom one. And this is why we basically need to do it in there as well. So that is very important as well. And now what we can do is we can also call the sitting animation right here. So once again, you know, this entire class as well as the changes are all available in the description below, GitHub repository and individual gist as well. So we can see in here now we're asking, hey, is this, you know, particular entity sitting? And if it is, then what we want to do is then we want to call the sitting animation basically then we want to play this sitting animation and that would be fine we also actually want to add two methods or rather two goals right here so the number one import most important goal is this one right here this is the sit when ordered goal this one has to have one of the highest priorities if not the highest priority otherwise your entity is just going to sit down 
And then it's going to say, you know what, wait a second, my, you know, random stroll goal has a higher priority, so we're just going to continue. So the lower the priority here, the higher the priority, so to speak. So one would be the highest priority and six would be the lowest priority. That's the general idea. And then we can also add the follow owner goal. So let's just add this as well. That's going to be right here. So you can see this is the follow owner goal and it's just going to follow the owner. That's pretty much all that there is to it. Once again, highly suggest looking at, for example, the wolf entity. That's going to be very interesting or other entities that have, you know, similar functionality to which what you might want to add here and then just taking a look at what the goal what the goals are for those entities and then implementing those as well now these are actually all of the things that we need to do very important that we have this data accessor right here and then saving it via number one these two methods right here to define it in the define synced data very very important and then these two methods to actually save it after we've basically uh, exited the world and then entering into it again so that the actual sitting variable is done correctly and now, last but not least, there is one more method that we need, and that is, of course, the right-clicking method. So we have to somehow be able to tame this entity, and that's going to be done with the mob interact method. So I'm going to copy this over as well, and this is going to be pretty freaking awesome. So you can see the mob interact method. This is when it's called when you right-click a particular entity in this case. So you can see that we have the player and the hand here. So we can get what the player is holding in its hand. And then I've already defined an item for taming here. So if the item that the player is currently right-clicking this entity with is actually an apple in this case, right? This is the item for taming and the actual entity is not tamed. Then what we're going to do is then we're going to tame it. And the way that it works is right here in this forge event factory on animal tame. The general idea here is that if this is, you know, if this is false and we're not on the client side, so we want to be on the server, then we can tame this entity. So you can see we're just basically doing a bunch of stuff. This is pretty much boilerplate code, all things considered. And after this is done, then we have tamed our entity. We're immediately setting it to sitting. So this is what I'm doing. Basically, I want to sit the entity down as soon as it is uh, basically tamed here. And then down here, we can see if it is tamed and we are on the server and the hand is the main hand then I'm sort of toggling the sitting, right? So this is just me right-clicking this entity without anything in my hand. That's the general idea here. And the reason why we also have to specify the main hand right here, this is incredibly important because otherwise we're going to toggle it twice because this mob interact method is actually called once uh, once for each hand. So it's going to call, be called twice. And if we don't specify the hand here in this if statement, we're going to basically toggle it from false to true and then from true to false again. So basically toggling something twice, of course, just makes it like we wouldn't have done anything. So therefore we need this hand here as well. So once again, I highly recommend checking out some vanilla examples of the mob interact method. So for example, let's just like take a look at the wolf right here. So the wolf is actually quite crazy. Like you can see how many different goals there are. There's also things like the prey selector. So you can, you know, select preys and then it selects different preys and then actually, um, you know, attacks them, things like that. I highly recommend you have to just take a look at this and see if you can uh, just get a, you know, a sense of how vanilla does it. So do her target, I believe, is the actual, you know, when you hurt a target. So this one, when this one attacks something, and then here you can see the mob interact method as well. So it is very similar, all things considered, but you can see quite substantially longer, actually, because there's a few more things like when you actually right click with a specific item, then you can heal this one as well. So once again, highly suggest to take a look at the vanilla stuff, the vanilla examples. I cannot stress this enough. It's the best resource that you have at hand. Whatever the case may be, these are all of the things that we need to add. Once again, all of this is available to you in the description below. Get up a pass for an individual just as well. And let's see if it works. All right, for instance, in Minecraft, so let's just spawn a few and right click with an apple. And there you go. We have it tamed and it sits down. Let's just get another one. There you go. And well, we can basically right click and then you can see it's no longer in the sitting animation. It should follow me as well. So, you know, it's going to zip around and then at some point it's going to follow me as well. And if I you know, go back really, really far away, then it should, in theory, also teleport to me. There you go. And the other one that I've basically said sitting, it doesn't follow me, and it should also not move until, well, I basically, you know, right-click it again, and it's going to follow. <laughs> I mean, oops, that, that was not my intention. There you go. And there they both are basically zipping around. Now, the reason why they're so speedy here is because we are increasing the speed when we actually tame them. That is in the set tame method. I'll show you this in just a moment again. But yeah, that's pretty much how easy it is to add some tameable and sittable entities to Minecraft. All right, just for completion's sake here, the set tame method, as I've said right here, right, where we set the movement speed, as you can see, to 0.5, which is quite high. The normal movement speed is just 0.3. So once again, the numbers 
just play around with them a little bit, see what you can basically find for the numbers in terms of balance. It's going to be uh, something that you need to play around with one way or the other. But yeah, that would pretty much be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Oh, yeah.